Internet. My name is Chris. I'm from Kizumi Chan Productions, and today I'm going to teach you how to do something like this. Only better. Um, I tried to record this earlier twice. This is actually a uh, video response to one of my subscribers. Step one is to create a uh, aura. So that's what I'm doing. Then I'm going to put it inside the mask, and that will be your basis for our aura behind your character or in front of the character so we can get the awesome effect of him powering up. So right now I'm just adding sharp points to the square shape. Okay, let's put it inside the group layer call this aura or mask the reason why i put it inside the group is because i want the masking hide all and press ok and then we're going to put a new uh, vector shape cut effects and then with both of them on, I'm going to select the vectors now and make it noisy animated. And this first one, I'm going to enter in 200 for the noise. That's because I want it to be crazy like it's good for easy fire or for easy aura effects okay so anyway I'm gonna put the layer on top of the uh, character model so that it looks like it's going above the character model and then I'm setting the interpolation to linear pretty soon um I hope I'm also setting the effect to uh 100 click ok then make sure that the stroke is clicked off and click and drag now I'm selecting a gradient color of white and gold okay it automatically select the black shape so I'm deleting that black color and inserting the gold one and now I'm also adjusting the opacity of the stitch style okay. clicking and dragging across the screen will create the shape which is pretty awesome So what I'm doing now is adding sharp points to the uh, square box. So by adding more sharp points, the better off you are into making that aura effect. All right, so after I've done that, okay. I'm also trying to uh, see about putting everything to a linear fashion 
some loss of putting the group up top there. If you guys can see that. Now I'm going to make a small point action. I'm controlling both the uh, hair follicles and the uh, hair color. Which is pretty cool. I'm going to rotate the bone to 24. I'm also going to check allow animated defect layers. That will allow me to change the, fulfill the shape. As you can see there, I'm manipulating the point on 24. First I go select the band. And I'm very careful of moving the bands too. The points how they work is very, very uh, screwball-y. So if it looks too good, and if you interpolate the uh, keyframes, it will look weird. So you need to be aware of that too. So right now I'm um, selecting the back strands of hair and I'm lifting up the points accordingly. And so right now I'm thumbing through there and going, oh, it's so good. Okay, at this point I'm selecting the fill color of the shapes and turning the gold. And then selecting the gold and blue for super scene colors. Then I'm going ahead and transfer the actions to the other two bones that I have, and I'm separating them out. So at this point, I am animating the head on the six uh, uh, keyframes. With my experiment and with my experience with Moho 12 and with the Anime Studio, I discovered that going between six frames is just enough to be smooth enough, as you can see there with the hair and stuff. I'm also putting in a stagger um, keyframe that will allow me to stutter the keyframes up until frame 76, I think. And so when I play it out, it looks like the character is struggling to um, be, become a super singing. That's what you want. And so at this point, I'm trying to make the effect um, realistic and stuff. Just pretty awesome. So right now I am individually picking at the um, smart bones, so that way it will have the uh, characters transforming into the super scene. And so now I'm flipping back and forth between the two frames to make sure that it looks right and stuff. Then on the last keyframe, I want to uh, put the noise on the uh, hair movement. 
as you can see there. Yeah. And if you have a static pose, it just looks bad. So what I try to do is add movement between the keyframes. If I have a character standing still. Okay, so um, this is where I have the super tan look. Then in about a second or so, you'll see me adding the background all black. Um, it's best to go with the darker color for somebody that goes super tan. Um, it just looks better on the screen, I think. And right now, I'm adding in a, a shadow effect. You can use it for an afterglow effect behind the character. Just set the offset to zero, then set the uh, shadow to white, then the extension to three. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching this. For me to myself again, um, please rate, comment, and subscribe to my channel for new content. And see you next time. Bye. For animation and animation tutorials, please click here and subscribe.